Alrighty, it's time for some more youth go. Let's get it going. Okay. Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be doing the Muyo Muyo December 2018 contest silver problem because one of you guys suggested I do it, and I think that it probably has some good concepts in it. it. Looks pretty fancy by the looks of the diagrams. Dang. If it has good diagrams, it's a good problem, okay? So let's get this walkthrough started. It's going to be epic. Alrighty, so with plenty of free time on their hands, or rather hooves, okay, making the puns already, are we? The cows on Farmer John's farm often pass the time playing video games. Epic. One of their favorites is based on the popular human video game called Puyo- How's it popular? What? The cow version is of course called Muyo Muyo. The game of Muyo Muyo is played on a tall narrow grid of n cells tall and 10 cells wide. This is an example of uh, n equals 6. Each cell is either empty or a hay bale in one of the 9 different colors. Gravity causes the hay bale to fall downward, so there is never a zero cell below a hay bale. Two cells belong to the same connected region if they are directly adjacent, directly adjacent either horizontally or vertically, and they have the same non-zero color. Okay, so anytime I have at least k cells, all its hay bales disappear, so it's kind of like Tetris. No, no, what? No, no, no. What's a game? Oh, Candy Crush, that's what it's called. Dude, I'm a gamer, okay? I swear. Alright, after that, the gravity might cause hay bales to fall downward to fill some of the remaining spaces. In the resulting configuration, there may again be connected regions of at least k cells. If so, they disappear, the gravity pulls the remaining cells downward, and the process repeats until no connected regions of size at least k exist. So given the state of the Muya Muya board, please output a final picture of the board after all these operations have occurred. Okay, so the problem itself seems straightforward. It's just candy crush, and you just keep repeating until your candy doesn't crush anymore. Oh, another thing to notice. We basically have that n is like... 100, right? So basically what that's saying is that the maximum number of cells you could have is 600. And at every turn, we're basically going to have to check whether each thing is connected with other things and that we'll basically have to go through each cell. Huh. So if we went through each cell during every turn and did that like every turn, then it'd be 600 times 600. So the maximum time we could spend is like 600 squared, which should be fine. So how should we do this? Okay, why don't we just brute force it? So let's say we have, like, this thing, zero, 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 ah, bruh. Why, do, why does it have to be so nasty? Let's screenshot it and put it in. Alright, epic. We have our nice little snip over here. We're gonna make it bigger. And now we have this to work with. Okay. So basically what we want to do is we want to see which ones are connected to each other. And what's our K for this? Three. Okay. So let's start with the color... So basically we want to find connected regions, and the first thing you think when you think connected region is basically graph traversals, right? Because if you do BFS from anything, and you go to as many things as you could get to, then that's a connected region. If you go DFS from anything, you're also going to get connected region. So we can either do BFS or DFS, and let's try it. So we'll start at the bottom left. Okay. So we start here, and then we're like, okay, we could go right, we'll add this to our queue. We go up, no, that doesn't work, so no. Then we take our first thing from our queue, which is going to be this boy, we're going to go left, and then eventually we'll go all to these boys, capture all these boys using our BFS, and then we like move on to the next uh, piece. So we started here, now we're here, but that's already visited. We go here, we go here, we go here, we go here, we go here. Well, and actually, because we found that this thing is already like K big, we can just delete it, so this will get deleted. And also, we find the first thing that we haven't looked at is 2. So then we do BFS again, and we find that this whole thing is connected. And because that's more than 3, we delete that too. Epic. And then we move on to this 3, because that's the next one that's not looked at yet. And unfortunately, it does 1, boring 1, so that doesn't get deleted. And then these boys get grouped together, that's not enough to delete them, so they're still there. And then we look through this row, nothing interesting there. Look at this. Only it's all alone, it's scared, so no, that doesn't help. Then we look at the 5, this is connected, but that's not enough. The 4 is not enough, the 5 is not enough, and the 3 that are not enough, the 3 is not connected to those. Okay, so, we're done. We deleted enough stuff. And now, we just shift everything down. And we can just do this by storing it in an array, and then, like, shifting everything down by the number of consecutive zeros there are. Huh, this seems like a, like, easy problem, because n is less than 100. We don't even have to try that hard, but it seems like a very annoying problem to implement. Huh. So I guess we're just gonna brute force it, okay? We're gonna do BFS, find the connected components. If they're all connected, we're gonna change them all to zeros, and then we're Gucci. Alrighty, so I have my epic REPL. We're gonna make our F stream, then it will be Gucci. And then we'll add our little variable of in nk, and we also need an uh, array to store all this nonsense of so in r, and then we'll make it like 200 by 200. Epic, let's read everything in. 
So we could read this in as a string so that it doesn't get like converted to integers or anything. But actually, would that work? Yeah, we can do that. So pair, and then we'll have an array, and then C is, and then we'll see that it's. Do we already have C or something? Let's go. Oh, whoops. I forgot my C++ syntax was horrible. Okay. Hard to in C++, how do you do this? Okay, what we could do is we could just convert it using like subtracting the zero that works. So we'll do R i j is equal to c j minus zero. All right, let's just make sure that this works and we're not getting trolled, so we're gonna debug it real quick. All right, copy and paste the input. We're gonna make this bigger, put this in the standard input, set input, and we run. Actually, why don't we just start with fns now? Actually, uh, I got a change of heart. We could do fns before we actually do the submission stuff. Let's do that. In fact, that might be easier, honestly. Cause REPL is pretty easy to do files and stuff. But why is the name so long? God dang it. Wait, how is it printing it more than six times? If my n is six, how could it go more than six times? Is i the problem? Maybe that's the problem. The heck, why is i zero for like the first six times? Bruh. Dude, I honestly have no idea how to do string stuff. Let's figure this out. Well, we can do get line. That might work. Aha, there. Okay, this is working. Now we have to check whether... Did it print out the right thing? Uh... Okay. Alright, so basically, it was fine, but it died on the first line. So why is it dying on the first line? Huh, maybe we had a... Okay, okay, I see. There we go. This should work, and we should be Gucci. Alrighty, epic. So now we've figured out how to read it in. Let me show you how I figured it out. So basically, instead of using fn and that easy stuff, we're gonna have to be a little bit more sophisticated. We're gonna have to use get line. So basically what was happening is that, like, once you read in the 6 and the 3, right, your cursor is at the end of the 3. However, you want to go to the next line. And if you click, say get line, it's just gonna get that very like part that goes to the next line. It's not gonna get the next line actually. So we could do a get line in the beginning to skip to the next line, and then we get line again to get our first string. And then we could see it in and convert our care into an actual number using this. Okay, so now we've actually read stuff in, now we could do cool stuff. Okay, so now the first, like, most important thing is, like, we need a shift down function. So basically, the first thing we want to do is make a shift down function, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to basically, like, count the number of zeros, then move each element down, like, the correct number of zeros. Void shift down. And we literally don't have to take anything because we have array at the global variable. And this is why you use global variables in Musico, because it makes things so much easier. Let's do it. So. Basically, we're going to keep track of how many zeros are before each number, and then based on that, we're going to shift it down that much. We're going to have int r2, r2, we're going to make a new r, and then we have a count over zeros, and we're going to do this for each column. So there's 10 columns, we have to do this 10 times. Oh wait, why did I make my array like 200 by 200? We only need 10 over here. Holy, wait, this problem gets even easier then. Actually, no, this is what we planned for, okay. So we're basically gonna start from bottom to top and we're gonna keep a running total over zero so we'll have an count is equal to zero and then we'll start from the bottom. All right, epic. So basically, if our first number, or if our number is a zero, then we add to the count. If it's not a zero, we shift it down by the number of zeros that are before it. So for example, if there's one zero before our current number, we shift down only one. But if there's two zeros before, we shift down two. So basically, we shift it exactly by the number of one uh, zeros there are before it. So, r2, i, plus count, wait actually we forgot that check it was zero, so if r uh, i j is equal equal to zero, then we have to do count plus plus, otherwise we will shift it down. And first we had to make, fill, let's fill our r2 with zero so we don't have to worry about that. I know that C++ usually fills these things with zeros, but like just be careful because one time I like didn't do that and I got demolished. So just make sure you do it because it only does it if it's like global or something, so it's good just to be sure. Epic. So we shift everything down, and then we, at the very end, we gotta set R to R2. And at the very end, we set everything in R1 to equal R2. Epic. So now we finish our shift down function. Now all we gotta do is do our BFS and, like, deleting function. So we're gonna have a boolean quit, because we wanna, we wanna keep doing this until we don't delete anything from our thing. And then at that point, we wanna quit. But before, like, before that turn comes that we can't do anything, we gotta keep going. So bool quit is equal to false, and then while we don't wanna quit, we'll do our BFS stuff. So we gotta go through all of the possible starting points. And let's first make a visit array and set it to all false first. And we're gonna keep that outside. Actually no, we gotta keep it here. All right, and then we copy this again, and then we do BFS for each one. Do we have Q included? Let's, yeah, we do, okay, F. So we're gonna make a Q parent int. And basically what this is going to let us do is we're going to put our pairs, like the 
coordinate into our thing, and then we're gonna BFF out from there. So first, you wanna know what integer we're looking for, like which integer is our starting point. So int par is gonna be equal to r i j, and then we're gonna push to our queue our current pair. And then while the queue is not empty, we'll just go through it, and we'll keep track of how many numbers we have. So int num is equal to root. Wait, first thing first, let's make sure that this boy is not visited. So if visited uh, ij, then we are just going to continue. So basically what continue does is it moves on to the next starting point without like actually doing the rest of the loop. And now from each point, we could basically BFS up, right, left, or down. So we're going to do that. And this is basically routine, routine BFS, so I'm just going to like fast forward this part. You guys know how to do BFS, right? Oh yeah, we also had to check whether or not the number that we're going to is the same number as the one that we want. So r i j i i plus 1j is equal to car. Okay, then we just do this for the rest. Alrighty, so we finally figured out how to do the DFS. That took me so long. Oh, I mean BFS, that took me so long. Dude, it's so repetitive. Look at that nasty code. Whatever. That's what you gotta do. And then, basically, if this is greater than k, is it greater than or equal or greater than? At least, so greater than or equal to, if num is greater than that, num is greater than or equal to k, then we set quit equals to false. Oh, okay, so basically by default, we should have quit is equal to true, right? Because unless we delete something, we want to like quit. So basically, we're going to put that over here. Okay. And then we set it to false here, and then we delete something. We basically just run this whole thing over again, and we do it from there. Well, actually, what happens if... Well, how do we delete them easily? Why don't we just make a vector of what we need to delete, and we should be good. So we also make, uh... Let's just make another queue, and then the delete. And we uh, just copy and paste this and change everything to D. Oh wait, I'm trolling, we never pop from the queue. Wait, okay, okay, so we need parent and car. And then that's gonna be Q dot front, and then we're gonna Q dot pop, and then we need to set i and j to the u value. Int i is equal to car dot first, j is equal to car dot second. And unfortunately, that means we gotta change the rest. Oh, we can't use car, we have to car with one R. My names are epic, not gonna lie. Okay, and then we'll change this to something else. Let me go, K. Oh no, we have, ah, uh, M? No, we have that, let's see. Let's do P and Q. Ah, oh, but we have Q. Okay, we'll do P and R, why not? The reason why I changed this one is because I don't want to change all the ones in all these things over here, so that's true. And then basically we just go through it and we change all the ones in our delete queue to zero. Nice. And then after all of this nonsense, oh, so many for loops. Okay, so outside, yeah, we want it for every starting point. So we're going to change this, we're going to delete. So we're going to do shift down. F. Now let's try it out, and we're going to see out the final array. So for so no way it's gonna work on the first try, but we can at least see what happens. Or it's not gonna even finish. Wait, okay. I think I'm not gonna terminate, so let's see, what do we do wrong? Okay, the easy way to do this is just to do this, and then see whether it works without this. Okay, so good. So basically our problem is somewhere in here, so we'll have to figure out that. That's like a good strategy. If you wanna like figure out where something, the problem is, you basically just comment out a part of code, see if it doesn't work, and then we're good. Wait, so it's quite clearly like swapping between two of them. Oh, whoops, it should be, it double pushes everything. I mean, that shouldn't matter. Oh, wait, does it get to this loop? No, but it doesn't get, wait, does it get stuck on this loop? Let's see. Maybe it's getting stuck on the Y loop. Okay, it's getting, so it's going through this multiple time, but it never to get told to quit. Okay, let's see what happens right after the first version happens. Oh, so nothing got deleted, that's the problem. So it quite clearly goes through here, then why is it not, well, not D dot empty, so it's gonna go through all of these, and it's gonna make sure that it deletes all the ones in D. Oh, bro, why is it only deleting the zeros? Huh. <laughs> hmm. Oh, it keeps trying to delete the zeros? That's so troll. Okay, okay. Or car is equal equal to zero. Oh, why did it randomly delete that? Well, what was there? Three? Yeah, why did it delete three? Okay, why don't we just push it over here? Okay, nice, I found the error. The error was I forgot to put the visited PR is equal to true here because, yeah, that was just a mistake in my BFS, but we're good. I think it's working now, let's try it. Oh, let me take out all my debug nonsense. All right, epic, we changed this to FNs and we should be Gucci. All right, let's submit and we shall see. Epic, let's go. Very nice. Oh, no, what the hell would I... What? Hold up, how did I get two wrong? What the heck? Okay, whenever you're failing on like a couple test cases, the best way to do it is to reread your code, so. 
or shift down. So basically, it goes through each one, it sets it to zero, okay? Alright, so then if we delete something and num is greater than or equal to k, then we quit. Or we don't quit. If we delete something, we don't quit. Oh, we're supposed to, we should shift down after. Okay, this should work. Alright, submit this. Whoops, that's the same file, bro. Nice, we did it! Epic, let's go! Very nice, alright. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was useful because one of you guys suggested that I do this one. I think it was a personally pretty useful problem. It uses a ton of like random algorithms, a bunch of like. It's, not, it's like, maybe you don't have to think that hard about it because n's only less than 100, but it like forces you to implement stuff really, really hard. <laughs> and I'm like really not that good at implementation, so it took me a while to debug this nonsense, but. Yeah, it's basically more of a coding problem rather than an algorithms problem. But anyways, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.